Hello, everyone. So magic is a, a very introverted field. We magicians don't like to share our secrets. That's true even amongst peers. But if you look at creative practice as a, as a form of research or art as a form of R&D for humanity, then how could a magician share his research? Now, my own speciality is combining digital technology and magic. And about five years ago, I started an exercise in openness and inclusiveness by reaching out into the open source software community to create new digital tools for magic. Tools that could eventually be shared with other artists to start them off further on in the process and to get them to the poetry faster. I'd like to share with you something which came out of these collaborations. It's an augmented reality projection tracking and mapping system, a, a digital storytelling tool. So here it is. Maybe we can bring down the lights. All right, so my creative process always begins with, a, with an empty canvas, which is equally frightening and exciting. Frightening because of the endless possibilities, exciting for the same reasons. Well, once I commit my first stroke, the adventure begins. Put that there, there to uh, relax me a little. Here we go. Super sorry, I, I forgot the floor. Stretch it again. <laughs> All right. Wake up. Hello. Come on. Okay. I think that's enough. Okay. <laughs> All right. You okay?
okay. I say, go for it. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> Bye-bye. Thank you. So in the spirit, and thank you for the lights, in the spirit of a truly open source magician, I want to give you a sneak peek on how this system actually works. So in front of me is a, a video projector, and mounted on top of it is a, a high-speed camera. The camera has an infrared passband filter, which sees infrared tracking markers, which are embedded in the corners of the canvas. Magnetic cookie. And we have a software which now tracks the position of the canvas and also tracks where I am. Now, the system gives the illusion of interactivity of me with a drawing. When it was created, such functionality, did, functionality didn't exist. Computers were not what they are now, and in that sense, it was not only magical, but it offered a vision of the future where we could really interact with drawings and where projection and, and gestural sensing would be ubiquitous and intelligent. So magic is a, an excellent tool for visualizing future technologies. And by that I mean is that the illusion created is so convincing that it's almost indistinguishable from reality. In time, the advances in technology will turn the illusions into reality, just as I believe that Stickman would be possible using today's technology, whether it's a Kinect or an iPad or, or something else. But for now, the illusion can give us a very good idea of what that future technology might accomplish. Now, the performances of magicians are already filled with visions of the future. Magicians show their audiences what it would be like to fly, read minds, teleport, appear and disappear. So in a way, magicians are prototyping the future every day. I'd like to show you something which I developed recently. It's a topical piece. You all heard of Google's project class, new technology. You look through them, the world you see is augmented with data. Names of places, monuments, buildings, maybe one day even the names of the people that pass us on the street. So these are my illusion glasses. They're not from Google. It's a $30 webcam and a lot of Suguru. <laughs> Go Suguru. <laughs> if you look through them, you get a glimpse into the mind of a cyber illusionist. Now let me show you what I mean. All we need is a, a playing card. And any card will do. So how about this one? And um, let's mark it so we recognize it when we see it again. Okay. For relaxation. Smiley face. Okay. Let's uh, lose it back in the deck. And uh, let's start up the system. System ready. So for those of you who don't play cards, a deck of cards is made up of four different suits. There's hearts, clubs, diamonds, and spades. Cards are amongst the oldest of symbols and have been interpreted in many different ways. Now some say that the four suits represent the four seasons. There's spring, Summer, fall, and winter. My favorite season. Oh, mine too. Winter is like magic. It involves visual wonder, drastic change, and a, a delicate balance between its physical states. In each of the four suits, there is a total of 13 cards. So over here is low tide, and then over here we have high tide, and in the middle, of course, we have the moon. Now in a complete deck of cards, we have two different colors. There's the color red, and the color black, representing the constant change from day to night. Well, thank you. <laughs> In a complete deck of cards, there are 52 cards, representing the 52 weeks of the year. If 
365, the number of days we have, we have between each of our birthdays. Let's make a wish. As a matter of fact, it was on my sixth birthday that I received my first deck of cards. And ever since that day, I traveled the world entertaining boys and girls, men and women, husbands and wives, even kings and queens. Ah, mischief makers, watch. Wake up! Let me see what you got. Hey, be careful. Uh-oh. But today I'm performing for a different kind of audience. I'm performing for you. Now, sometimes people ask me, to do this kind of work, can you just work from 9 till 5? Of course not. Magic is a 24-7 job. I don't literally mean 24 hours, seven days a week. 24-7 would be a little bit of an exaggeration. But it does take practice. Now, some people will say, well, magic, that must be the work of some evil supernatural force. <laughs> to this, I just say, no, no. Or in German, it's 9-9. Uh, nine, nine. <laughs> magic isn't that intense. I have to warn you, though. If you ever play with someone who deals cards like this, don't play for money. Yes, but I think my hand is better. I guess we beat the odds. And that leaves me with the last and most important card of all. Bye-bye. All right, thank you. Thank you for your time, thank you.